Aloha. Come with me as we discover the many flavors of the Hawaiian Islands. Welcome to Travel Tuesday with Teresa, the ultimate source of wanderlust inspiration. Join the journey led by your host, Teresa Belcher, founder of Honeymoon Islands. My guest today is Robin Basso's Senior Director of Travel Industry Sales for the Hawaii Visitor and Convention Bureau. Welcome to the show, Robin. Oh, aloha. Mahalo for having me. Uh, I'm glad you're here. So you're going to expel a lot of the myths about the Hawaiian Islands because a lot of my clients ask me, which Hawaiian Island should I go to? And it's like going into an ice cream store and deciding which ice cream is best for me. So it really depends on what people want. I know a lot of first timers tend to go to Maui, Kauai. And then if you go back a second and third time, you can expand on that, which is what this series is all about. So it's over to you. Absolutely. Well, mahalo. And um, I'm happy to be here and talk about my favorite place um, in the entire world, which is the Hawaiian Islands. And I've had that ability to represent Hawaii for, geez, going on over 30 years. So I'm going to share a little bit with you about everything that I love um, about Hawaii. So I'm going to go ahead and um, let us focus on all these beautiful, uh, all these beautiful images. Um, So I thought for today, we'll talk a little bit about kind of what Hawaii has to offer, you know, what is unique about Hawaii versus any other place in the world. We'll talk about getting to Hawaii, getting around the islands, but most importantly, as Teresa mentioned, we'll talk a little bit about, you know, the unique islands and each one I always say has its own unique personality, feel, landscapes. We'll kind of paint the picture for you about what the islands offer, points of interest, signature attractions, where to stay, you know, just to give you a better idea of what your experience would be like in Hawaii. And, you know, I think it's important to just start, you know, when you think about, you know, all the places you have to choose to travel to all over the world, you know, why would you want to travel to Hawaii? And I think the best way to start that is to give you, uh, kind of whisk you away and give you a, a beautiful visual of the Hawaiian Islands with a short video. started off with uh, a video kind of just so you can get a a bit of a visual of of what the Hawaiian Islands are like. And I don't think anyone could argue the incredible, gorgeous natural environment on all six islands. You know, you've got waterfalls and freshwater pools, rainforests, beaches, mountains, and even active volcanoes. You know, Hawaii's stunning natural beauty really continues to attract uh, visitors from all over the world. You know, and Hawaii is very unique. Um, and, you know, now more than ever, people are looking for places with wide open spaces. And the Hawaiian Islands offer wide open spaces for you to explore at your own pace, you know, and, and it's very different from a lot of other sun destinations. And the majority of our visitors do like to rent cars. So it does give you that freedom and flexibility to discover the destination at your own pace. You know, and it's absolutely incredible. I mean, with the, with the pause in visitation, even from the pandemic, you know, now you can experience some of the most beautiful crystal clear waters. You know, the coral has regenerated, the monk seals and the turtles have come back on the shore. So it is the perfect time to come and enjoy everything on and around the water, from snorkeling and diving, you can even kayak, go surfing, stand up paddle boarding, or even outrigger canoe paddling. 
You know, and definitely something that sets Hawaii apart from any other destination in the world is this incredibly rich culture, you know, from traditions like the Hawaiian language, uh, the art of hula, native Hawaiian festivals and events, and of course, the people of Hawaii. And culture is something that really draws people that 75% of our visitors are looking for some type of historical or cultural experience in their vacation. Um, and what's really unique too is Hawaii is, you know, part of the U.S., you have that ease, convenience, and comfort of domestic travel, but you still have this incredibly exotic feel of the Pacific Island culture, which really gives you the best of all worlds. And Hawaii definitely delivers truly authentic experiences that can't be found anywhere else in the world. You know, and we find that that's what visitors are looking for now more than ever, you know, authentic ways to engage with the people, the culture, and that their place that they're visiting. And I think another thing that makes Hawaii so unique is we truly are six unique islands, six diverse experiences. You know, each island does have its own unique personality, landscape, and activities. You know, I always like to say it's almost like if you have six children, well, God bless you, right, if you have six children, but hopefully you love them for their own uniqueness, um, but you love them all equally. So there truly is something for every type of um, traveler. And hopefully at the end of the session today, you'll get a little bit more insight into um, what each island has to offer. And, you know, even prior to the pandemic, you know, Hawaii is a destination that we are focused on, you know, destination management and regenerative tourism. And, you know, really holistically, this is all about balancing the economics of tourism with the well-being of the local communities and the natural resources. And, and destination management is all about managing the movement of people around the island to make sure that, you know, we're, we don't have too many people that are really key vacation destinations at one point and regenerative tourism is all about tourism being a force for good and so i do have kind of a short video that talks just a little bit about kind of why it's important to be a mindful traveler so we can keep hawaii the incredible beautiful destination as it is today for generations to come I absolutely love that video. I think it just really captures the essence of, of what we're trying to communicate and why we want to keep Hawaii the incredibly beautiful and special place as it is. And I'm sure many of you have heard the term aloha before. It can be used as a, as a greeting. It can be used to represent love. And, and it's a Hawaiian value. And, um, you know, malama, if you haven't heard this term before, I always like to say is aloha in action. And malama means to take care, you know, of our earth, each other, ourselves, to preserve and to protect protect, you know, and what an important concept, you know, now more than ever. And, you know, back in 2020, um, there was actually a program created called Malama Hawaii. And this is really just providing unique volunteerism opportunities across the state, you know, anything from planting a legacy tree to beach cleanups, you know, just spending an hour or two doing something in a beautiful environment, giving back to the destination. And we know that when visitors come and they have this opportunity um, to participate, it really connects them more to um, the people and, of course, to the beautiful place of Hawaii as well. So if you're thinking about coming to Hawaii, you can actually look at these wonderful vol uh, volunteerism opportunities on our website at gohawaii.com slash malama. 
But I wanted to kind of whisk you away here um, and start our journey to the Hawaiian Islands. Um, you do see here our map of the Hawaiian Islands. If you weren't aware, there's actually 132 islands in the entire chain. This is actually the southernmost tip of the arc of the islands. Um, and we are the longest chain of islands in the world at 1,500 miles. Um, and so we're going to start our journey. Uh, the northernmost of all the islands is the island of Kauai, um, followed by Oahu, then we have Molokai, Lanai, Maui, and the island of Hawaii. So out of these eight islands that are pictured, you can actually visit six of those islands. And so we're going to kind of take you through um, each of the islands and give you a great little overview as well. So the nice thing about Hawaii is even though we are the most remote island chain in the world, there are a number of nonstop flights to Hawaii from the continental U.S. and, you know, not just from the West Coast markets. I mean, that's definitely a misnomer. We do have nonstops from Dulles, which is incredible, from Newark and Boston, um, Atlanta, from the interior of Minneapolis, um, Detroit, Chicago. And then as we get further west, um, Dallas, Denver, Salt Lake, um, and many West Coast gateways as well. So to give you an idea, from the West Coast, it's a little bit over um, a five-hour flight. From the interior cities, cities like um, Chicago, it's about eight and a half hours. We get from the East Coast, you do have um, flights of about between 10 um, to 11 and a half hours from Boston. So depending on um, what carrier you want to fly, um, you can, you can you know, travel nonstop. You can also do a stopover on the West Coast if you'd like to do that to stretch your legs or even spending um, a night or a couple nights in um, Las Vegas and in LA and San Francisco if you'd like to break it up as well. So lots of flexibility with um, flights, but nice to know you can go nonstop from the East Coast if you prefer that as well. And there's a variety of different ways to experience Hawaii. Um, if you are a cruiser, there is that option to get to and, and travel between the islands as well. Um, and there is only ferry service available between the islands of Maui and Lanai. The rest of the um, flights uh, between the islands are inter-island flights, which are only about average about 30 minutes. Um, so it makes it really easy to island hop for a land-based vacation. And of course, the nice thing about going land is that you truly have the, op the option for an incredibly customized vacation packages. So um, like Teresa can really customize everything based on what you're looking for, how many nights you want to stay, how many islands you want to visit, how much time you have. So it truly is a customized vacation experience. Um, and as I mentioned, a little bit different with Hawaii versus many other sun destinations is that the majority of our visitors do like to rent cars. And we do recommend reserving cars in advance um, so you can get exactly Exactly what you need and get it um, a good price on that as well. Um, some other kind of ways to get around the islands really dependent on the island you choose is that um, buses run frequently on the island of Oahu. It's probably where it is most feasible. There's some shuttle services um, available in some of the resort areas and taxis and ride sharing options are available. And again, it's more of an island specific um, you know, um, issue. So what we do recommend is if you're staying on the island of Oahu in the heart of Waikiki, you wouldn't need a car the entire time. But really on the rest of the islands, we do recommend renting a car because again, it is um, a great way for you to easily get around the islands and it is a very cost effective way as well. And one thing that is amazing about Hawaii is truly the variety of accommodations, depending on what you're looking for. Of course, we have incredible luxury resorts, which will touch on some of the great recommended resorts we have through the islands moderately priced hotels, um, condominiums, if you're traveling with families want to be together, as well as homes and villas. So just kind of depending on what you're looking for, there truly is such a great variety of accommodations. And the only thing we do not have in Hawaii, um, if, in despite of what you may have heard, there are no true all-inclusive um, resorts in Hawaii. And it's actually a good thing, you know, and what I always say is Hawaii is so much more of a destination experience 
than a resort experience. And, you know, you're really, you know, well rewarded when you venture outside the boundaries of a resort and you can really appreciate the variety of dining activities and cultural experiences available. Um, so you do have that flexibility as well. Um, and one thing that's wonderful that that helps to, you know, accommodate, um, you know, some dining is that a lot of the hotels and resorts offer incredible breakfast packages. You can fill up in the morning um, and then go explore for the day. Food and beverage credits give you flexibility to really spend that as you see fit. And more and more hotels are offering concierge levels or, or you know, special towers where you can get, you know, breakfast included, snacks throughout the day, um, hors d'oeuvres, or we call them poo-poos in Hawaii, or cocktails as well. Um, condos and villas do help to offset some of those meal costs, and island cruising is always an option as well. So rest assured, um, when Teresa knows what you're looking for, she can really make the best recommendation for what you're looking to do. Um, one thing, again, that's amazing about Hawaii, people ask me is, when is a good time to visit Hawaii? And my answer is always, there's never a bad time to visit Hawaii, as we really have nearly perfect year-round weather. We really don't vary more than 15 degrees the entire year. Summer months, a little bit warmer, May to October, 75 to 88. Um, going into winter through spring, 68 to 80. So very, very consistent weather throughout the year. Water temperatures do range between 71 and 80 year round. So the perfect time to do anything um, in and around the water. Um, people sometimes ask me about rainy season. You know, we get tend to get a little bit more rain showers in the winter months, but a little insider tip. It's much more where you are on the island as opposed to when you're there. Typically the Northeast sides are a little bit of those wetter parts of the island. And most of the resort areas are located on the west or the southwest shores, which are a little bit drier parts of the island. So again, um, rain showers should not um, impact at all your experience. And again, we, you know, Teresa can really create that perfect experience um, and make sure that you're in a location um, that is best suited for you. And if you're looking for when you want to travel, um, our visitor seasons, like I said, we don't have huge peaks and valleys with visitor arrivals because we don't have, um, you know, really um, times where we don't have great weather. Um, but if you're looking to travel, I really encourage you to plan in advance, especially if you're looking to travel during high seasons, which summer is our high season, which is really Memorial Day to Labor Day. July and August tend to be our busiest months of the year and then festive. So going over Christmas and New Year's. So again, really important to plan early, especially if you're traveling during those high seasons. Shoulder seasons or low season um, is January and February. So kind of right after that holiday time, springtime. So mid-April to Memorial Day and fall early September through Thanksgiving. If you do have flexibility, shoulder seasons are great. You, you typically can get a little bit lower airfares, more added values at the hotels, a little bit less crowded, and wonderful festivals and events happening during that time of year as well. All right, so now we're going to um, start our virtual journey to the beautiful Hawaiian Islands. And as I mentioned, we're going to start with the northernmost and oldest of all of the islands. This is the beautiful island of Kauai. And Kauai is known for its natural beauty. Over 50 movies filmed here, going back to movies like South Pacific, Six Days, Seven Nights, Mighty Joe Young and the Descendants. Um, what's unique about Kauai is 80% of the island is inaccessible by car. So the majority of the island is just natural, unspoiled beauty. If we had to capture Kauai's personality in one word, we would describe it as rejuvenating. You know, and some words to describe Kauai, if you can just envision lush, idyllic, peaceful, serene, immersed in nature. You know, someone even described it as endless shades of green. You know, people that are drawn to this island, you know, they're attracted to nature and the island's kind of peaceful, immersive environment. They typically want to travel to escape the busyness of everyday life. They have little interesting crowds um, or urban experiences. They tend to prefer relaxation, rejuvenation, and don't want to feel pressured to see all the sights. You know, and this is an island that actually what I say is like a place to put down your phone, forget about your worries, and just rediscover that special connection to nature on this beautiful tropical island. 
And some of the key points of interest that I wanted to share, you've got Lihui Airport, which is on the east side of the island. You can see it designated with the airplane there. That's where the cruise port is located as well. Um, and then if you kind of go around the island, a, resort, a, a variety of resort areas. So up on the North Shore, you do have the areas of Princeville and Hanalei Bay here. Um, you've got um, in um, this area, you have the beautiful One Hotel Hanalei Bay, um, just opened last year. Beautiful upscale resort there, very focused on wellness with some stunning views. Um, and to get from the airport up to that area is about an hour drive. So you, there's kind of this one road that goes up. As we travel down um, the east side of the island, you come into the um, Kapa'a area, um, which is about 25 minutes um, from Lehui Airport, and then the Wailua area, which is kind of a central location. As you head further down, um, you come into the south shore, you have beautiful Poipu Beach, um, and Poipu Beach is where the Grand Hyatt is located. Again, a stunning resort um, on the um, south shore, a low rise, very spread out beautiful landscaping at the Grand Hyatt. Um, and this area is about 30 minutes from Lihui Airport. As you, if you go a little bit further west, you have the area of Waimea. And Waimea is the gateway to Waimea Canyon, which we'll talk a little bit more about shortly. But just want to kind of give you that big picture lay of the land. So what's wonderful about Kauai um, is that if you love you know, natural beauty. If you love to be outdoors and you want to do, you know, a lot of great activities to experience the beauty of the island, this is your island. If you're looking for nightlife, not your island. Again, a little bit more peaceful and rejuvenating. But what's incredible is there are so many wonderful activities. And again, as 80% of the island is inaccessible by car, the way to experience the beauty of this island is to engage with all these incredible outdoor activities. So some of the most iconic in that middle shot, the beautiful Napali Coast. Napali literally translates to mean the cliffs, 17 miles on the northwest side of the island, only accessible by helicopter, by hiking, or by boating. Some of the most beautiful cliffs you'll ever see in your entire life. On the bottom right-hand shot, Waimea Canyon, deemed the Grand Canyon of the Pacific, more than 3,600 feet deep with these gorges and canyons bathed in these, in these incredible shades of brown, green, and red that change by the light. So just imagine seeing this beautiful canyon by helicopter or getting in your rental car, driving along the canyon rim, stopping at various observation points and enjoying those stunning views. Um, some other unique activities, ATV rides, taking you on private land you wouldn't be able to experience in any other way. Um, this island also offers four zip line experiences, giving you those beautiful aerial perspectives of the island. Kauai is home even to the longest zip line um, in the state at 42 hundred feet in length. And mountain tubing, a lot of fun is you can go tubing down the old, old irrigation ditches that used to irrigate the sugar cane fields and that was the primary in, um, industry on the island. So a lot of fun. And, and again, a way you'd be able to experience the island. There's no other way to be able to see this part of the island. So these are just a few. Please know that these are not all of um, the activities you can do. But just wanted to highlight some of the great and unique ways you can experience the beauty of this incredible island. Wanted to share some tips as well. And, you know, kind of coming out of the pandemic as a way of managing movement um, of uh, our visitors around the island, there's a little bit more reservations being required, but it really helps us again so we don't have these huge crowds. So it's really a better experience for you when you experience these um, key attractions. So if you want to go experience the incredible Kalalau Trail, which is pictured here, imagine experiencing, the, experiencing these beautiful views or Hanakapiai Falls or Ka Beach, you do need an advanced reservation. You can do that at gohaena.com about 30 days in advance. If you want to go, go up to the east side of the island and experience the Kilauea Point National Right Refuge and this beautiful lighthouse, which is a bird sanctuary, you do need to make um, an advanced reservation at recreation.gov. Um, we also do have a great island-specific website, getaroundkauai.com. is a great um, site for travel tips on rental cars, um, shuttle services, bike rentals, as well as um, travel tips on Kauai. Um, and another great tip, we've got a new Kauai food tour in Waimea. So it's all really about supporting local restaurants, farmers, and sustainability. So you can learn more about that at tastingkauai.com. 
Moving on to our beautiful island of Oahu. This is really the, um, you know, the vibrant mid-Pacific hub of the Hawaiian Islands, home to the capital city of Honolulu and world-famous Waikiki Beach, which you can see pictured here. And we have beautiful Leahi or Diamond Head in the background. So if we had to kind of describe this island in one word, we would call it energizing. You know, when you think about this island, definitely has an incredible energy about it. It's vibrant. It's a contemporary feel of Hawaii. Um, we say it's iconic because it's home to so many iconic attractions. We definitely refer to it as cosmopolitan as it's home to the 15th largest city in the nation. Um, and town and country, which is really important. Town, because you have everything you have in a major metropolitan city. You've got the shopping, dining, nightlife, entertainment, culture, but country because you have the backdrop of a beautiful tropical island. So, you know, visitors to Oahu um, tend to be active travelers, you know, they're highly engaged, they relax by having fun. Um, you know, typically, they've done their research, you know, you want to kind of come and check all those items off your bucket list. And you know, if you're somebody that enjoys nature, but also enjoy that shopping, dining, nightlife and festivals, then Oahu might be a great island for you. You know, it's really an island that you have culture meets incredible creativity, um, and definitely the lively center of the island. So a couple of the key points of interest I wanted to point out for you. Um, you do have the um, major airport here, which is the Daniel K. Inouye International um, Airport right here on the South Shore. Um, and then you do have the key resort areas. Of course, Waikiki is really the heart and soul of the island, which is on the South Shore here, which from the airport is about, um, I don't know, about 30 minutes, depending on traffic. Um, then you've got Ko'olina. You've got the um, beautiful area on the west side of the um, island, which is called Ko'olina. So they've got the beautiful beautiful resorts out in Ko'olina um, in terms of the Four Seasons, Ko'olina Resort, um, and the Aulani, which is a Disney resort, which sit on an absolutely beautiful bay. Um, and in Waikiki, you've got incredible um, resort hotels like Hali Kulani, which is an iconic AAA for Diamond with um, a wonderful location, incredible service. Um, and you also do have the beautiful Royal Hawaiian, which is a luxury collection resort and nicknamed the Pink Palace of the Pacific, right in the heart of Waikiki, a very iconic resort as well. And then if you go up to the north side of the island, you've got the beautiful Turtle Bay, the North Shore area from the airport to Turtle Bay, about 90 minutes. Um, but that is really the country part of town and country. So um, incredible experiences. Of course, we did mention a bit about Waikiki, um, which again is really the heart and soul of the island, um, is known to be the legendary birthplace of surfing, home to the majority of accommodations, as well as, again, the shopping, dining, nightlife, and entertainment. Um, but in addition, Oahu offers amazing history and culture. You won't want to miss the World War II Valor in the Pacific um, National Monument at Pearl Harbor, which you see pictured here, that beautiful white memorial, which is built over the sunken hull of the USS Arizona battleship, sunk on December 7th, 1941, to begin the U.S.'s entry into World War II. There is an incredible museum and visitor center that you can stroll through with wonderful exhibits, an incredible documentary film, and then you get to come on a Navy boat um, where you actually get to be on this incredible memorial. When you look down, you see the outline of the ship below, um, you know, 1177 crew members entombed, an incredible moving special experience. You can also visit one of three um, royal palaces. If you weren't aware, Hawaii was the only state that, were, that was once a kingdom. So you have incredible Iolani Palace, which was built by Ding, uh, King David Kalakaua. Um, and it really gives you insight into, into the ali'i and the royalty ruled Hawaii. Um, so they have, you know, self-guided tours tours, docent-led, white glove, intimate tours, depending on how in-depth you want to get. Um, of course, you want to head up to the iconic, the storied North Shore, which is home to um, beautiful, incredible, expansive beaches. If you're there during the winter months, you can see incredible surf competitions. But again, this is really the country part of town and country. There's beautiful botanical gardens and waterfalls. Um, absolutely incredible. As you're heading up to the North Shore, you might want to visit Kualoa Ranch. Believe it or not, it's a 4,000 acre working cattle ranch 
one of the most beautiful and sacred parts of the island. You can do movie set tours, ATV, horseback riding, or even plant your own legacy tree. Oahu has incredible culinary experiences from James Beard award-winning restaurants. You can dine in Chinatown, downtown Honolulu, in Waikiki. Um, there's a lot of farm-to-table wonderful experiences across the island, um, or even some farm-to-bottle experiences. So you can even do rum tasting at the Kohana Rum Distillery, which is in central Oahu. So again, not everything you can do, but just a flavor of everything Oahu offers. A couple tips on Oahu. Um, again, everybody wants to come and hike up Diamond Head. It's an incredible experience that offers stunning views. You can reserve that up to 30 days in advance at dlnr.hawaii.gov. Um, tickets to the USS Arizona Memorial. Um, we do encourage booking that in advance. You want to make sure you get a time slot lot to um, experience the beautiful um, Arizona Memorial. So that is bookable in advance. Um, we do have a beautiful snorkel spot as well, Hanauma Bay. Um, and Hanauma Bay is a beautiful marine life sanctuary, great spot for snorkeling. Um, a, a little bit um, challenging to get some of those reservations, but that's why you book with a travel advisor like Teresa. She can take care of that for you. So advanced reservations are um, uh, uh, required there as well. Um, and if you're staying in Waikiki, but you're heading up to the North Shore, we encourage you to do that on weekdays versus weekends because it's a little less crowded. So you won't have kind of traffic or parking. You'll be able to experience that beautiful area um, a little bit easier. Now we are moving on to the beautiful island of Maui. And Maui is such a beautiful, incredible island. And it's this wonderful blend of sophistication with incredible resorts, um, shopping, dining, golf, and spa um, with kind of this um, beautiful, unspoiled um, area of the upcountry area and so many picturesque, incredible landscapes. You know, and if you had to kind of, um, you know, talk about Maui, it's really laid back. You know, it's about that leisurely pace and social interaction. Definitely a very friendly island, you know, and it's dotted with small towns for you to discover. You know, visitors to Maui, they really love variety and choice and spontaneous adventures. They love nature, kind of soft adventures, relaxing on the beach and interacting with local artisans. Um, and this island is really where you have these bigger than life experiences meet this small town charm, which really give you the best of both worlds, that wonderful blend of sophistication and simplicity. So here you can experience anything from, you know, the farms and lush gardens and quaint communities of upcountry Maui to Haleakala, uh, Haleakala National Park to visit an incredible experience, a beautiful sunrise or sunset or just lounge poolside at some of the beautiful resorts. So some of the key points of interest on Maui, uh, wanted to share with you, there's actually um, three airports, um, Kahului, which is the major airport here. We have Kapalua, um, West Maui over here, and we do have a small airport on the east side in Hana. And we do have a variety of different resort areas up here. We have the beautiful Kapalua area, which is up here in West Maui with the stunning Montage, beautiful residence located up here. And Kapalua is from, uh, if you're taking the, um, if you're flying into um, Kahului and going this way, it is about an hour um, from Kahului Airport. You have the Ka'anapali Resort area, which is just a little bit further south, about 10 minutes. And then you have, um, as you go further down um, here, you've got Kihei, which is a very low key area, um, which is, um, you know, just more of a local type feel to it. And then um, south of Kihei, you have the beautiful resort area of Wailea. And Wailea is about 35 minutes from uh, Kahului Airport. Um, some stunning resorts here, the Four Seasons Resort in Maui at Wailea. Um, you've got the Andaz Maui at Wailea Resort, uh, the Fairmont Keolani Maui, which is all sweet as well. So some beautiful upscale properties. Everything is very easily walkable on a stunning beach and close to shopping and dining as well.
And then on the east side, I did want to mention, you have beautiful heavenly Hana, um, which is a very iconic, beautiful, relaxing area on the east side of Maui. So I did want to share, I'm sure many of you did hear about the Maui wildfires that happened last August. So I'm here to share with you that Maui continues the inspiring rebuilding um, process. Um, you know, there's a lot that has happened um, since the fires and definitely can assure you that Maui is open and welcoming visitors. And now is the best time for you to come and discover or rediscover Maui. Um, there's a lot of different things that have um, reopened, even in the area of Lahaina, um, that, that's really sustained the majority of the damage. But I really want to share with you that Maui has so much to offer. The island of Maui is 735 square miles, so there is so much for you to see and experience. You can experience the beautiful Haleakala Crater. So this is the world's um, largest dormant volcano going up for the sunrise. It's absolutely incredible. I had the ability to do that on the dawning of my 50th birthday, um, 10,023 feet, absolutely magical as that sun rises seemingly out of the center of the crater. You can experience upcountry Maui, which are the slopes of Haleakala, which is my favorite part of Maui. It's farms, ranches, and vineyards. There's beautiful lavender farms. You can explore the surfing goat dairy with some incredible goat cheeses. They have a wonderful winery, a distillery, incred also incredible charming cafes and farmers markets. So just take that rental car and drive and explore beautiful upcountry Maui. On the right-hand side features the beautiful road to Hana, which is that um, winding coastal road from central Maui near the, near the airport to beautiful heavenly Hana, over 600 curves, over 54 one-lane bridges. You can experience gorgeous cliffside views, waterfalls, and freshwater pools. Snorkeling is available at Molokini Crater, one of the top snorkel and dive destinations in the state. Maui also offers over 100 hiking trails um, for you to explore, including EL Valley, um, which is pictured here. I just did this a couple of weeks ago. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, we've got zip lining available across the island. Again, those beautiful aerial views. Um, you've got it in Ka'anapali, Kapalua, near Hana, as well as near Haleakala. And all of the boat cruises. So in addition to snorkeling, you've got sunset cruises, dinner cruises. And in whale watch season, which is kind of like November through April, you can do whale watch cruises as well. And the nice thing is the boat cross, the boat cruises go conveniently right from Ka'anapali Beach, um, which is near many of the resorts, or from Ma'alaya Harbor, which is a little bit further close towards the Wailea area just about 20 minutes from all of those resorts. So very easy and accessible boat cruise options as well. Definitely encourage you to experience some of the beautiful helicopter tours, um, which offer stunning views of Maui and Molokai, one of my favorite things to do. Um, and Maui has over 30 miles of beautiful beaches, including some of the top beaches in the country um, in South and West Maui. Pictured here is beautiful Ka'anapali Beach. You've got golf courses um, across the island as well with some stunning views. Um, incredible spa experiences with indoor outdoor treatments and um, wonderful dining across the island as well. Couple Maui tips I wanted to share that um, a lot of people do drive the road to Hana, but we do encourage tours. Um, and there's some wonderful tours. You can ha have a private driver drive you. You can relax, not white knuckle it around those um, all those curves and just enjoy the scenery. Or there's even tours where you can do one way helicopter and the other way luxury vehicle. So if you are gonna uh, drive on your own and you do wanna see Wayanapa Napa State Park, which is pictured here in Hana, beautiful black sand beach, you need to actually have an advanced reservation um, in advance. Advanced. If you go up for the sunrise at Haleakala, you need that advanced reservation. And if you want to hike Eau Valley, again, um, these are just, you know, tips to know. But the great thing is, again, Teresa can help arrange all of these things for you in advance. So I briefly wanted to touch on the other islands that are part of Maui Nui or Maui County, which is Molokai, um, one of the most isolated and beautiful locations and some of the highest sea cliffs up to 3,900 feet. Um, an island is known to be the birthplace of Hula, not even a traffic light on this entire island. So a very rustic, rugged island, definitely about uh, old style Hawaii and about what Hawaii was like many, many years ago. 
Moving on to the beautiful island of Lanai, which is the brand uh, essence here, um, or one word describe it is embracing. There's two luxury resorts here amidst environment of remote beaches, um, red dirt mountain trails, and pine forests. This is an island that's all about serenity, seclusion. It is luxury, and it is about soft adventure. You've got a beautiful beachfront Four Seasons Resort um, on the South Shore, and Sensei, more of a wellness resort up in the upcountry area. So if you want to get away from it all, be very remote. Um, Lanai is the island that you can do that as well. Moving on to our final island, the island of Hawaii, which is the southernmost youngest in the island chain. It is nicknamed the Big Island as it's twice the size of all the other islands combined. And the most ecologically diverse of all of the islands as it's home to four, sorry, all but four of the Earth's 13 climate zones on one island. So it's actually an incredible island. Um, it is truly an island of diversity. You know, when you think about this island, think about words of living culture, accessible. It's an active island. It is about exploration. And, you know, it's really about the saturated blues of the ocean, the greens of the rainforest, the blacks of the lava. We say it's boundless um, because it's biggest in size and least in population. And of course, synonymous with volcanoes, but it has so much more than volcanoes. You know, people that are drawn to this island tend to be a little bit more active and adventurous. They have that insatiable curiosity, uh, looking for unique and unusual adventures you can't find anywhere else. You know, people that are interested in history and culture and really looking to create that experience of a lifetime. Um, people love this island too. They kind of like having trips within their vacation. So you might want to split your stay between the east side, you know, the Hilo side and the west side as well. So you can really experience those two very diverse parts of the island as well. So points of interest on um, the island of Hawaii, um, two airports here, Kona on the west side, um, which is probably the most popular airport, and Hilo on the east side. So two different airports. So you can actually fly into one airport and out of another um, to uh, make your kind of exploration a little bit more efficient as well. So we've got a variety of different resort areas up here. We have the beautiful Kohala Coast up in the um, northwest part of the island, which is where you have some of your beautiful white sandy beaches. Some beautiful resorts up in this area. Um, one of the most iconic is the Four Seasons Resort, Hualalai. Um, stunning, very iconic resort. And of course, also the Kona Village, um, which is our first Rosewood Resort in Hawaii, kind of individual hales or huts to give you that beautiful privacy, um, incredible service, and also um, a wonderful feel of old Hawaii as well. Um, a little bit further south, you've got Kailua Kona, which is um, about, uh, you know, 10 minutes or so from the airport, not very far there. A little bit further um, south, you have the resort area of Keoho, um, and then Hilo, again, on the east side, um, which Hilo is about an hour, a little over an hour and a half um, from Kona International Airport. And keep in mind, Hilo to the volcanoes is only about um, 45 minutes, so sometimes people will fly into Hilo from another island, jet down to Hawaii Volcanoes National Pike National Park, explore do the scenic drive over this way, and then stay on the west side. So just wanted to point that out as well. But when people say it is a big island, it truly is a big island. So you want to make sure you budget in time um, to drive and explore this beautiful island. And I can tell you that um, this island absolutely has some of the most um, unique sites and activities of anywhere on earth. The east side of Hilo is very lush um, and tropical with rainforests and waterfalls. Um, you can see this Akaka Falls picture uh, on the left-hand side, a very accessible um, by three quarters of a mile. You can get in, get up close and personal with this beautiful waterfall. You definitely want to experience the incredible Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, over 230,000 acres. You have over 155 miles of hiking trails. You can um, go to the visitor center first um, and talk to the park rangers. They can give you some great recommendations of what to see from the 
you know, chain of craters road to Thurston lava tube to the uh, to the um, uh, uh, Hawaii volcano house where you have floor to ceiling windows overlooking Hale Ma'u Ma'u crater. And just last week, the volcano is active again, which is amazing. That is a great time when you want to be there to see the incredible magic of an active volcano. So it's an amazing um, time and, and very safe to be able to experience that. Um, you can also experience stargazing. This island is one of the most significant in the world for the study of astronomy. So imagine doing a private stargazing experience. Um, and I actually did one a couple of years back and we could see 90% of all stars visible from Earth with a handheld telescope. So absolutely incredible. You can go night diving or night snorkeling with the manta rays, one of the only places you can swim with these gentle giants in their natural habitat. One of the most mesmerizing, incredible things that I've ever experienced. And this island also offers some incredible ag tourism and farm to table experiences. Um, one of the most popular is to visit the coffee farms that produce world famous Kona coffee. So you can see how the coffee is produced and even roast your own pound of 100% reserve Kona beans to truly get the taste of Hawaii as well. Some Island of Hawaii tips as well. Just wanted to share with you the great thing about Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. It's open 24-7. You can go anytime. And when the uh, volcano is active, we say dawn or dusk. You can really, you know, see when the lava is at its most vibrant. Um, so there's a standard fee, $30 with a seven-day pass. And currently the volcano is active. You can keep up to date with what's happening with the volcano at nps.gov slash Hawaii Volcanoes. There's even a webcam so you can see what's happening with the volcanoes. And it does offer some park activities and volunteer experiences as well. And if you're driving over to the east side of the island or east to west, you definitely want to stop and see this beautiful YPO Valley um, pictured here on the right hand side. One of the most stunning valleys, and they have the best views from the overlook here as well. So that is what I have to share with you on all of the islands, and I hope it just gave you a little idea of the uniqueness of what Hawaii has to offer, um, and uh, you know all these incredible experiences. Again, I just touched on them. Um, there's so much more to offer, um, but just kind of wanted to to get you excited about a place I know and love, um, and just share a little bit about my passion of the destination. So with that, it's my pleasure to turn it back over to Teresa. Well, thank you, Robin. I, I can't tell you how valuable this information was. And I, I feel like I need a vacation from this vacation that we took virtually. There's so many activities. And honestly, the Big Island Hawaii is actually my favorite, secret be told. I don't tell that to a lot of people, but I like it because it's such a large, vast island. And it's one of the lesser touristy islands. And I love the stargazing. It is an absolute must. So if you sign up for it, there's no guarantees it's going to be a clear sky. But if you are lucky enough to get a clear sky, it is magical. But people need to understand that they're going from Kona, sea level, which is 80 degrees, all the way up to, I don't know how many, what the altitude is there, but... It's going to be cold and they have jackets for you to wear. So just keep that in mind. But you did a fabulous job, Robin. Thank you. No, it's my pleasure. Obviously, you can tell it's a place that I love deep in my heart and soul. Been representing it for 30 years and lived there for a couple of years. And I just I think it's um, just the diversity the um, warmth of the people, the richness of the culture. And I always tell people Hawaii is so much more than sun, sand, and surf, um, that there's so much beyond the beaches. And as you guys can all experience, we didn't talk much about the beaches um, because there is so much more beyond in addition to having the water activities and the beaches as well. So I think there's so many things that make it so special and worth experiencing. So we're going to make this a full circle moment. At the very beginning of the podcast, we talked about all the various flavors. I posed the question to those who are watching, what island is your favorite island based on what you discovered here today? There's just, they're all fabulous islands for various different reasons. It depends on what you're looking for. And that is where you should be going. So um, Robin gave a lot of websites throughout the throughout the podcast, but there's two websites I want you to remember. GoHawaii.com, which is 
all the general information about each island that we went over in like 45 minutes. And then if you want to make a reservation and you need pricing and you need me to put an itinerary together, go to honeymoonislands.com, honeymoonislands.com. That's how you're going to get in touch with me. I will also leave my contact below this video. Should you need to reach out to me, I'd be happy to help you. So until next time, if you can dream it, we will create it. Bye. Bye, Robin. Bye. Mahalo. Thank you. Stay tuned for more episodes that will unveil new horizons and immerse you in the beauty of global discovery. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Until next time, if you can dream it, we will create it.